Hi, welcome back to the farm. My name's Roz, also known as Passion Flower, and you'll find me here each week talking about my farming and creative life. It's been quite a busy week. Kind of didn't really realise it until I went back to look at it to um, put this video together. Starting on Monday, we had the shearer come for Evie and Vito. Not Hurley, his wool is not growing anywhere near as quickly as the other two. Um, when I got the three of them shorn in September, the shearer was concerned that if we left it for 12 months-ish, that um, both Evie and Vito's fleece would be a, like way too thick, a lot to shear in one go. So he said it might be a good idea to do a summer shearing and then um, we should be able to go through until spring next year. A little bit different in the way he set it all up this time. I didn't put them into the little shed. Um, I just had them out in the paddock and I figured we could just kind of corral them as we needed, which it was. It was super easy to just get them up in a corner and flip them and get them shorn. Because the ground was dry, he was able to just do it outside in the paddock. He had a battery powered shear that he um, clipped around his waist instead of having it hanging from the ceiling, like the one that he had used uh, when he did this, the shearing in September. So he could just basically do it wherever he wanted to in the paddock. So first he did Vito in his single paddock. I still had him separated out uh, and he was easy to just flip over and deal with. He was very well behaved. I was a little worried that he might be hesitant about it because the last time he was flipped upside down was his castration surgery. Um, it was good though to see that he had healed up beautifully um, so it was nice to know that that had all gone really well as well. Um, so yeah we did that and then um, it was easy enough to get Evie and flip her. Uh, she was not as happy with being Sean this time. She like barred and grumbled most of it and wriggled a little bit. She did get a nick on her front leg um, that was the only nick either of them got so they were both um, fairly good and didn't move around too much uh, but there was like a fold in her skin that just got caught on the shear so I have put some of the same antiseptic spray I was using on Vito on her there just to keep the flies off it because they're very um, sticky the flies at the moment and after they were both shorn um, he also did their feet and gave them a drench then we just grabbed Hurley and he got his feet done so he got a pedicure and um, he also got uh, drenched for worms as well. And then I decided it's been about six weeks since um, Vito's castration. And I just can't keep them separated any longer in terms of the sustainability of the little paddock out here by the shed that was supposed to just be sort of like a top up break kind of space and not a full-time paddock for a sheep because uh, it's really not that big. So once they were both shorn, um, they all went back in together and they seem to be reasonably happy with each other. It hasn't been any dramas. Um, the pecking order's all back in, whereas you know, Vito is number one and he butts the others around and moves so he gets the most food. Um, I find that Evie kind of goes away and will come back when the boys are finished eating and she'll eat after that. Uh, if I put grain out though, they are all sharing. Like I put out their three buckets, they all share well and there's no issues with that. So I think everything's going to be fine and pretty much back to normal. Um, look, he may still be a little bit fertile. The, um, the vet said to potentially keep them him separated out for eight weeks post-surgery, but I just can't sustain doing it any longer. And I'm just hoping that He's not um, interested and she's not interested. And if if he is a little bit, um, it's not going to be an issue in terms of, you know, pregnancy or whatever. But if it happens once, I guess we can deal with it and then we move on. But, um, yeah, I just, because it's, it's the height of summer and everything's so dry, I just can't have them not have any grass and that paddock out there doesn't have any grass anymore. I am still running the sprinkler in their big paddock. I put it out uh, the other night while I was over here in the shed for a while just to keep that grass nice and green. I'll probably do it again these next few evenings when it's like nice and warm but um, at once the sun's gone down just put it on for you know 15-20 minutes just to give the grass a little bit of water. And hopefully that will get us through the rest of the summer. I'll give this one out here, the uh, 
a little shed paddock, a little bit of a water just with the hose. Um, and I might spread out the hay that's in there as well, uh, just to get um, some seed dispersion around on the um, open ground at the moment where there is no grass uh, to hopefully get some new grass growing in there as well. So now I have another two fleeces. I haven't processed any of them yet. Um, Evie's was probably almost long enough to do something with. Vito's is a little short, uh, but it was good to have it done this time. Um, so they may end up, these ones, um, as garden mulch rather than as fleeces that I will do some kind of yarn and fibre thing with. But we'll see how we go. And the plan will be that all three of them will be shorn in November this year. Uh, that should hopefully give them all the sort of the right length um, fleeces and then we can get into a good routine with shearing from then on. The weather has been a lot more conducive to blackberry spraying this week. Uh, I've done two sessions with mum. We got out early a couple of mornings and tackled. We've got a big open grass area just before we go up into the bush um, and it had quite a lot of blackberry in it last year so we were able to get rid of some and so this year we've gone back in and sprayed the areas we couldn't get to last time and also focused on getting deeper into some of the larger patches. So that was quite productive over two days. It is really hard work. It is quite tiring. And um, we've probably now tackled the areas where it's easy in terms of you can just sort of stand and spray. Uh, a lot of the other areas now are more spread out. So you have to kind of walk to find them or drive to find them. So um, I think we'll do some with just the Hilux and our small spray unit where we can sort of stay on the back and drive around and kind of move and spray at the same time. And we probably need to do one session up into the top of the bush, the top of the hill. Um, so maybe in the next week we'll be able to do that. If Adam drives, we can get up there with the, um, the spray rig and find blackberries across the top of the ridge and then come back down. Um, and tackle some of those from the other side that we had done last week. While we are out in the bush this time, I saw a blue tongue lizard. And as we were driving back, I had to stop because an echidna was um, waddling across our, our driving track. So that was pretty cool to see. It's really nice to see that uh, the native animals are doing so well. It makes keeping bushland um, really worthwhile and special and I do never get tired of seeing kangaroos or echidna or possums or any native animals out in the wild. I just think it is a really special thing and it's something that I'm really lucky that I'm able to experience. This morning the weather has been really weird. Um, I opened the, the blind and looked at this morning and it looked like smoke. It was really closed in and grey. Um, I opened the door and it didn't smell like smoke so it's just been like misty, damp fog, um, which is really odd for this time of year. And it's only now starting to clear. I can see blue sky now, but out one window and out the other window, it's still this weird gray clouds. I knew there weren't any bushfires around, but you just never know if a grass fire had popped up or something. But yeah, definitely not smoke, just weird misty fog. And on a positive note, the vineyard across the road has reduced the number of air guns they're using. They've covered a lot more of their vines with the netting. I think there's only one small section that has the air gun on it now. So it's not going off anywhere near as frequently or as loudly. So that is really, really good. It's been a really good week of dyeing and reskaining this week. Uh, I reskained all of the Wonka colors that I had done. They're all now labelled and I also have decided on a name for that new colour that I mistakenly made, which I'm super happy with. So I've been given a lot of suggestions on Instagram, a lot to do with sherbet or sorbet and fruits. And so I thought about it for a little while and I have decided to call it Sugar High. So this is sugar high. It is bright oranges and reddish pinks 
and purples. And it is now online in my shop and I will have skeins of this at my markets throughout the year. Now to the dyeing I've done this week. I have definitely been in a green mood. Uh, what I decided to do, I'd done all of the Wonka colours, which were all varying colours, so I had to mix lots of different dye batches up. Uh, this week I decided that I would focus on greens. So I was only mixing a couple of dye solutions up and then mixing those to create these um, individual, and you will see they're very different greens, but they're all green. So there is Fresh Start, which is green with pinks in it. Then I have Mint Slice. So it's a section of like chocolatey brown with some white and then mint green. So that. And then there is so as you can see if I put them all together they're all quite different greens but all created with just a few colors and just how I mix them together This week I am wearing my yellow brick rodeo. This is the first one that I made uh, with a pink is from Hobby and the white and blue and purple is uh, from Highland Handmaids who was an indie dyer in the US that is no longer dying but I really did love this colour. Um, I also made a second one of this which was blue. Uh, it's a really great top. It was really fun to make. This is a mosaic, not a colour work. So it was just slipping stitches, which is nice and easy. And it's a really lovely short sleeve top. Last week, I shared with you that I was working on dishcloths and I've done quite a few more. I've got, where are we? Two more blue ones and then half a blue and half an orange because that's all I had left. Um, I've also done one in the latte colorway, which will be for our coffee machine. And I've started another one of those and I'll probably do a couple more. They're really good, easy projects just to sit and do while watching TV or just sort of relaxing the mind. Uh, and also when it's quite warm, knitting with cotton and a really small project on a hot day is good. Just something to do um without messing up or felting some really lovely yarns so or having to have the air conditioning pumping super high so yeah lots of dishcloths off the needles and probably a few more to come the only other project that i've made any progress on this week is the woolamai pines scarf although mine is going to be a cow that's by shara made and i'm using my wonka mini skein set to um uh, for the colours. So I started with your turning violet violet, then I've moved on to pure imagination and I've just started to introduce snozberries. And I'm loving how it looks. It's just really, really pretty and it highlights each individual colour, but it also shows how they blend together. So what I'm going to do is I've got another three colours to add. So I've got Millions of tiny pieces, golden ticket, and to the fudge room. So they will go in in stripes. Then I'm going to weigh a ball and see how much I used for the full colour repeat. And then um, I'll be able to figure out how many stripes of the colours that I'm going to be able to do. It should be a fair bit because I've done one of the purple already and I've still got quite a lot of the ball. So uh, I'm going to be on this project for a little while, but um, I think it's going to turn out to be a really beautiful piece to wear. I am still putting in a lifeline. I am getting to the start of the lace section and putting in the lifeline. And then when I get one repeat done, then I pull it out and move it up. I'll probably keep doing that or at least every other time just so that I um just so that if I do 
happened to make a mistake, I don't have to rip back too far and I don't have to try and remount and figure out the stitches because it's both lace and brioche and there's decreases and increases and I just don't want it to get too messy. I can probably drop down and fix a couple of stitches, but if I get a little way through and then realize it's going to be a lot more difficult unless I have that lifeline in. Well, that's it for another week. Thanks for spending some time with me. If you're enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I look forward to seeing you next week on the farm. Bye.